How's it guys and welcome to Zuluk Fishing. If this is your first time clicking one of my videos and you're new to the channel, my name is Andre de Beer and I'm absolutely passionate about fishing and I love making fishing videos for you guys. I upload a new fishing video every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. and then occasionally on a Monday like this I do a little bit of fishing tips and tricks and some hints for you guys to make life a lot easier and to catch more fish. And I want to mention that occasionally we have some really awesome giveaways on this channel right here. So if you do not want to miss out on those, click the subscribe button right now, turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video and you guys will know when there's a new giveaway and also get notified once there's a new video, obviously. So while I'm on the topic of giveaways, you guys remember this. The Assassin Horizon HXL 15 foot heavy zero was supposed to be given away in October. Adam Stein, you won this rod. So if you're watching this video, please send me an email on zulukfishing at gmail.com and please claim your prize. Adam, please. I cannot get hold of you. But, Adam, I'm giving you up until the end of December 2020 to claim your rod. If I haven't received an email from you, um, well guys, the rod is up for grabs once again. So you better get subscribing. So that rod, if Adam doesn't claim it, one of you guys could win it. So get subscribing to stand a chance to win that rod. That's to say if Adam doesn't claim his rod. And yeah, you guys would have seen that in last week, I did a little post of another giveaway that is on the way. And you guys guessed it, I'm giving away one of the brand new Assassin Infinity Rods. If you haven't seen those rods in action, go and check out my Yellowfish um, video. That is the video from last week. I'm uploading a new one this Wednesday, part two. Um, be sure not to miss that. And there will be more details on how you can win this rod within the next week or two. And a bonus of winning this Infinity Rod is that it's going to be the model of your choice. So it's not going to be only an ultralight or the medium or medium light. It's going to be one that suits your fishing style and suits your type of fishing, your H3 bass, tiger fish, whatever you are doing. So it is your choice of what action you want. So guys, it's a really awesome prize. I enjoyed that rod flat out when I fished it up in, in the Orange River. It's really amazing rods. They're super thin, super light, super comfortable. Just really top-notch quality. But yeah, let's get into the video and why we're actually here. So I've had a lot of questions on spinning setup for cob in the surf. So hopefully I can answer a couple of those questions in this video for you guys. So I, I'm going to run through the different rods that I use. Um, braid thickness, reels to match with them, how to rig your paddle tail, braid leader, mono leader, which one should you use, how long should your braid leader be if you're using a braid leader, how long should your mono leader be, because a lot of the questions that I get is Zander, um, how thick is your braid, do you use a braid leader, do you use a mono leader, how long is your leader, if you have a braided leader, how long is that braided leader, why do you use a braided leader, why mono leader, so all of those questions I would like to answer in this video today. And then also a couple of different ways on how to rig your paddle tails and when to use different size of jig heads and what hooks and what to look for and just a couple of hints and tips on paddle tail fishing in the surf targeting cob with a spinning setup. Uh, firstly I'm going to cover the rods, the reels, braid and leader setup so that you guys know how go about spinning for cob in the surf. So you'll see there's two, two setups that I have right here. Um, I, it's very seldom that I go with less than two rods to spin for cob. I usually carry like two or three setups with me when I'm targeting cob in the surf. It's for different reasons. It's for firstly, am I going to target big fish, small fish? Um, how far do I need to throw the lure? And, um, and how heavy is my lure, how, how strong is the wind blowing, how flat is the sea, all kinds of different things. But you will find your, your comfort zone as you go along. So firstly, what I want to talk about is um, 
is the rods. I prefer to use the Assassin rods. If you've been following the channel for, for some time now, you'll know that I, I use Assassin rods and I love them. They work for me. I love the action. I love the design. And generally, Joseph, they are just all around good rods. And that is the rods. It doesn't mean you have to buy the exact same setups and exact same rods that I'm using. You can buy something similar in your brand that you prefer. Um, but yeah, for me, the Assassin works. The Assassin rods work really well. They've got the right bend, the right action, and they are just yeah, my preferred brand. So firstly, what you need when, when you're fishing for cob in a rod, you don't want a rod that is too long or too short, because if it's too short, um, you're not gonna get the distance on the bank. If it's too long, it's, it's, it's gonna be tiring on your arm. You're not gonna be able to fish the whole day with that, um, with that rod. So I prefer to use 11 foot spinning rods with like a medium action. Um, that allows you to get a one and a half or two ounce, two and a half ounce jig head really far out and it also allows you to fish it the whole day without your arm getting tired because if you, you're literally making hundreds of throws the whole day long and um, it can be tiring on your arms. And certainly the most important feature of a rod when you're purchasing a rod for this, this application is that you want a rod that has a good even parabolic bend and the biggest reason for that is is, is a cob has a lot of head shakes and as that cob shakes his head you want a rod to actually because you're using braid you want that rod to absorb the head shakes oh ho, ho, look at those cob stumper if the rod doesn't absorb that heavy head shakes of the cob what happens is as he shakes and the braid is so direct that hook starts to tear a hole in the cob's mouth and um, and, it, and eventually the hook will pull out and the hood will pop. So having a, a slightly softer rod with a good parabolic bend allows you essentially to land more fish because the rod does, does the work for you. And for the rod to do its work, you need to fight the fish with the rod quite high up and not too flat. If your rod is too flat, there's not going to be and a big enough bend in your rod for the rod to absorb the shakes, the heat shakes of the fish. So keep your rod fairly high up and allowing your rod to bend while fighting the cob, absorbing those heat shakes. So this is my two setups that I generally take with me. My first setup is, um, you know, they're, they're a bit long for my studio, so I might just break them down for you guys. This is my only hook there so that I don't damage anything. I'll put it there. My first setup is the Armia Cop Special. This is the original Armia Cop Special from way back when they launched the Armia series. This is the heavy, the one to two and a half ounce setup. This basically, this setup is basically what I use with lighter spoons and with paddle tails um, up to like two ounce. And, um, it's, it's, it's really forgiving, it's really light, it, it, and it has that perfect parabolic bend that you need for a cob. This is basically the setup that I mostly fish and I fish it the whole day. Um, just general paddle tail fishing. I use Shimano reels, so I'm using um, so I'm using a 5000 size reel. This is a Twin Power 5000. Um, if you're looking at something like the Pen or um, Daiwa series, you'll look at like, I, I, I think the 4500s, that's the sizing on them, would be similar size. And um, on this, usually I'll put like a 20 pound braid on, this five on a 5000 setup. On this reel currently, I have 15 pound JDB Ultra Tough. The reason why I put 15 pound JDB Ultra Tough on is that Ultra Tough is a is a US spec braid so that means that the PE rating difference from like a Japan spec or whatever that's a bit too te technical and I don't want to go in there and not to go into too much detail of the technical stuff is that US spec 15 pounds PE rating will different from a US a, a Japanese spec 15 pound or, or whatever the PE rating of two and three and whatever that's that's a whole different ball game and a whole different discussion but Essentially, a 15, so a 15 pound US spec will break at approximately 20 to 25 pound. 
and a 30 pound will break on like a 40 pound and a 40 pound will break on like a 50 pound and a 50 pound will break on 60, 65, 65 pound. So that's why diameter is a lot, is, is really important when, you, when you're spinning the surf. So to get something similar of a 20 pound in ultra tough, I need to go like a 15 pound. That's why a 15 pound. If I went to something like JDB COVID, I would have gone with a 20 pound. So that's why I'm using 15 pound JDB Alta Tough. So if you're gonna buy a thin braid, um, a braid that is a thinner braid, more finesse braid, then I suggest go and look at a 20 pound braid rather than a 15 pound. If you're gonna buy Ultra Tough, um, you can go 15 and um, perfect. Just gonna flip the bail on over here. And on my 15 pound top shot, I have a, a 50 pound braided leader. And that I tie with an FG knot. You guys can see there. That is an FG knot joined onto 50 pound braided leader. And that braided leader is basically the length of my rod slightly longer. That when I cast, that's my hand position when I cast, flip my bail arm over, you'll see that the braided leader is wrapped around about twice around my spool. Not, don't make it too long, otherwise you're going to get a bit of a little bit of rod slaps and you're not going to get the distance that you want. You want it just one to one and a half, maybe two times around your spool. And that just allows, when, you, when you're making multiple casts the whole day, there's a couple of different reasons why you need a casting leader. Firstly, it's slightly thicker. So if you're going to make a lot of casts and your fingers are wet, um, it's not going to cut you because it's, it's extremely sore when that braid cuts you um, but you're using a finger glove so the likelihood of it being cut is not not that big but you need to tighten your drag in any case when you throw not for your drag to slip when you, when you cast when you throw and a drag slips it's going to cut right through a casting glove but anyway second reason being because you're making hundreds of throws a day literally you're making hundreds of throws different banks different spots um, if you're going to use if you're going to fish without a casting leader, your braid, just before your mona leader, that last two guides on your tip ring is, is putting a lot of friction on your, on your braid when you're casting. And it might start to fray, it might start to fray the braid and you might have the braid fail on you once you get a pickup or you might throw your lure off. And that, this just allows you to fish a lot longer without worrying about your braid being frayed. Uh, or getting damaged <clears throat> and then also obviously if there's any little bit of structure in the water like rocks or a bit of debris or something washes up against your line you are a little bit more protected with the, with the, with the braided leader so if you not slightly longer than your rod so when you throw two wraps around your um, two wraps around your spool I just want to take this apart just to make life a little bit easier for me inside. And that braided leader, obviously imagine how my rod is in one piece now. I should actually should have done this on the beach, make it a little bit easier, give myself a little bit more space. But uh, yeah, we're in the studio now and we need to get this shown to you guys. So essentially when I'm, when I'm going to cast, see that's my knot there. That's a mono leader. That's about a meter and a half meter and a half long just make sure yeah that is about yeah it's about a meter and a half i don't really know it's just when i went all that i know that when i throw when i'm making the cast getting getting ready for the cast is that leader knot is going to be about that much to where we are about to about that much out of my guide this leader knot is never going through my guides when i'm when i'm throwing it's always just outside my tip ring and I tie that with either an FG or a Bob Sands. I see here yeah, I was in the area, so that's a Bob Sands. You guys can see there, Bob Sands, Slim Beauty, whatever you want to call it. And this piece of mono is Maxima Ultra Green, 0.65 millimeters diameter. I don't know what breaking strain it is. I just, I just work on, when I'm working with mono, I work in diameters. So 0.65 is, is what I use. When it's a bit of more bricks or rocks and, and um, in the water, I'd go up to a 7.0. But generally, I fish a 6.5 mono 
is a leader about a meter and a half meter in a bit. You can make it as long as possible depending on how long your drop is when you throw. So if you use a longer drop you can make that mono piece that mono section slightly longer if you're not using if you're not used to throwing a short drop you just um, make the mono piece slightly shorter. On that I use a quick release clip. The quick release clip is for me to quickly change my lure, to detach my lure and attach a new lure. Um, that is the that is the quick release clip. There's two methods that I use. I'll, on this rod I have a different method and I'm going to show you guys once we get there. So this just allows you when you have different sizes of panel tails, different colors and you want to change from a white to a goldfish or to whatever color you want or from one and a half ounce jig head to two ounce jig head it's just a quick clip on and there you go and we're on to a different color and a different size jig head and ready to go the advantage of this is when you're trying every time you want to change a lure you need to cut your um, leader off and retire and then essentially what's happening a leader is getting shorter shorter every time you're changing a lure so and then you end up eventually replacing the whole piece of leader this allows you to to fish a longer time with your your leader without replacing it unless it get unless it gets damaged by a fish or a rock or whatever that might the case might be that's just um makes life a lot easier so my second setup is assassin sierra one to three ounce the xh also 11 foot it's got it's a slightly heavier rod than the Cobb Special Heavier. Can handle a bit more punch, a bit more pulling power, and I can throw a slightly heavier lure. And I can, the, the most important part is I can throw that lure really hard. So if there's a lot of wind, I can really force the lure and I can really um, get the maximum out of the rod. This I generally use for bigger fish, um, throwing heavier spoons. And when I'm using something like a, a three ounce clone, clone lure and I really want to throw it hard so it's more about the distance because the most important thing of and I will hammer on this continuously when I, when I speak to you guys is the most important part of spinning for cob with lures is to get your bait in front of the fish and into the strike zone but if you're not getting that lure in the strike zone there's no way that you're going to get the bait you need to get your lure in the strike zone onto that bank actually need to get that lure past the strike zone so that you can pull it through the strike zone and um, so that's why different setups is really important to me and um, you know I need to slightly adapt on the setup because I'm generally targeting bigger fish um, I'm using a 6000 Stella it's the PG uh, the power gear it's not necessary to go with the faster version of the 6000 Stella because you're fishing generally you're fishing really slow you're just throwing your lure out let it sink onto the onto the bottom and you just slowly wind it back towards yourself but it's no need for a really fast retrieve so um, the PG just works really just works like that it forces you to fish really slow and we I use this in Angola as well when we fish there and there we fish really slow as well on this I have 20 pound JDB ultra tough. So remember what I said, a 20 pounds bait and strain will be closer to 30. So if I was fishing JDB covert, I would have put on 30 pound here just for a bit of more pulling power on the fish. And same sort of set, same setup again, 50 pound braided leader. There's my FG knot. This goes once again onto a 0.70. A 7.0 hook snit. Sorry, I'll just, just stuck there. On a 7.0 hook snit, same length again, same story, same setup, just a 7.0 or 7.5, and um, you know, nothing major, major different, just slightly heavier leader, mono leader, and slightly heavier braid. But um, you can't go too thick because it's going to affect the action of the lure, and if there's wind, you're not going to get the distance. I told you guys there's two methods that I use. You guys will see here is a split ring and a swivel. So if we want to change my lure, I just use my split ring pliers. 
and I take my lure off and I can attach my other lure. So that's just the two methods that I use, but I want to I take this off just to show you guys, actually. I don't really want it on. But yeah, that's it. Swivel and a split ring. That's just another method that you can use. It is a stronger method, method but the other clips making strain, is, I think it's 30 or 50 pound and you're using 15, 20 pound braid. So you're never going to pull that hard to break that clip. But when I'm fishing Angola and we're fishing 50, 40, 40 and 50 pound braid and up slight, sometimes up to like 65 pound, then you need to force a fish really hard and pull a fish really hard. Then I like to use a forged split ring. Okay, now onto the paddle tails. I'm going to show you how I rig my paddle tails and give you one or two tips as well as how to rig your paddle tail and how to get a, um, the best action out of your lure. So this is your standard way of rigging a paddle tail. It's just your jig head with your hook and your paddle tail. See, I often see guys rig the, rig the paddle tail upside down. This is the correct way to, to rig your paddle tail. It's always the darker color on top if it's a if it's a double color or two two tone paddle tail the darker color will be always be on top usually and the paddle tail the tail the, the the paddle section is facing down then you know your paddle tail is the right way up there's a couple of things that you need to remember when you're using jig heads obviously the shape there's different shapes there's different sizes and different hook shapes as well. I like to use white cap hooks and different sizes paddle tails needs different choir hooks. You want that gap to be as open as possible. You can see this one, there's a really nice gap there and, um, and it allows the fish once the cob eats the bait that the, the hook can actually go around the jaw and have a proper hook set. So generally my rule of thumb or, or what I found works really well for me is on a five inch paddle tail i'll use a seven out remember different paddle tail different jig heads will have different hook sizes i found that on a five inch paddle tail a seven hook is is perfect and once i'm going up to like a six inch paddle tail i up one hook size i go up to a eight hook um so the two weights that i generally fish is one and a half ounce and two ounce and you can use one and a half on a six on, on a six inch and you can use one and a half ounce on a five inch you can use a two ounce on a five inch as well as on a six inch just make sure that you use one and a half ounce with an eight toe hook when you're using this when you're using a six inch paddle tail just make sure of that otherwise your hook's going to be small and you're going to miss the fish and you're not going to get a proper hook set um, one tip that I can give you guys is that if there's a lot of wind and you battle to get onto the bank and you battle to get distance, scale down from a 6 inch paddle tail to a 5 inch paddle tail. That already makes a huge difference, even, though, even if you're using the same weight. Going from a, five, a 6 inch paddle tail to a 5 inch paddle tail makes a hell of a difference. And remember guys what I said is it is more important to get the paddle tail or your bait into the strike zone as than not getting there. I'd rather have a 5 inch paddle tail in the strike zone and having a 6 inch paddle tail near, not nearly close to the strike zone. So remember to get your bait in the strike zone otherwise you're not going to get a bite and you're going to waste your time. So if you really want X, if you really want some more distance you can rig it like this one this is a five inch with a two ounce jig head. So obviously you're gonna get a lot more distance with a two ounce and a five inch paddle tail than with a six inch paddle tail with a one and a half ounce. So just play it off what is what is your options and how far you need to throw. Obviously the cleaner the water, the less wind there is, the lighter you can go on your jig head. If it's not that, if the bank is not that deep, go with a one and a half ounce. If it is quite a deepish bank, go with a two ounce that gets your bait closer to the bottom faster and keeps your lure closer to the bottom for longer, allowing you more time in the strike zone, giving you a bigger chance of getting the bait. So now I want to show you guys how I actually rig my paddle tail 
and a couple of tips on that on how to get a bit better look up right and also limiting a little lot of frustrations that can, can come with paddle tail because if you rig your paddle tail with some throws your paddle tail can move down from your jig head and it causes a lot of frustration and you need to wind out you're not getting the action out of the lure so let's, let's get that camera closer and i can show you guys i can help you get more bites so let's get into the most common and standard way of rigging a paddle tail that's just a jig head with your normal paddle tail i'm going to use a five inch in this in this case one and a half jig head with a seven o hook one tip that I want to show you guys is, is something that I've learned from a good friend of mine, um, Hannes, is that you go, you see there's the eye of the paddle tail. I don't know why they put it there. There's no meaning for it. The fish doesn't see it, doesn't help anything. But in any case, it is there. I just cut right halfway to it, about five mil of that paddle tail. I just take that off. A couple of reasons for that, and then I'll show you guys exactly now why I am doing that. First reason being, you see the grooves on this paddle tail that keeps your paddle tail from slipping off is once your paddle tail is in and you leave it like that and you didn't cut the nose off it starts to burst open and it splits and you need to throw your paddle tail away or you need to fix it with the lighter but if you if you cut the section off there it doesn't happen it doesn't split and it stays stays perfect so firstly you're going to take your, your your jig head and we're going to measure where the hook is going to come out and place your, your thumb where it is and then you'll see there's a, a slit going there in the center of the paddle tail that's usually where the mold closes up and you'll know that's the center of the paddle tail and your hook needs to come out right in the center of that um, of the paddle tail to keep it straight so and also make sure that you go in the middle of the paddle tail right there if your paddle tail is a bit thicker and your hook, is, hook cage is a bit smaller you can go slightly up to like two thirds or a third up from the paddle tail exposing your hook a little bit more but this is quite a wide cap hook and we're using a five inch paddle tail it's not that broad so we go right in the center and we make sure that we push it in straight don't let your paddle tail slip sideways otherwise you're not going to have a, a, a straight paddle tail go in straight just push it in and as you get to where your thumb is start working your way start work working your way out and there we go so now push your paddle tail up against the jig head okay there you can see nice and straight there's no bend a twist in the paddle tail it's going to ni run nice and perfect and now what you do you take your paddle tail off again just from where it grips just take it off take your super glue Ugh, I hope I don't spill on this thing anyway just a little bit of super glue on that piece and quickly push it up again just hold it there just hold it there a little bit so that the super glue sets okay now you can see that it is a really streamlined you can see there it's really streamlined and it is really tight onto your onto your jig head and the really important thing of this is once you throw that paddle tail is not going to slip off and it's not going to affect the action it's not going to affect the action of the lure and that's why i cut off that section as well it just makes it really neat and really really streamlined and there's your paddle tail rigged perfectly look at that white cap there, Cobbs eat it, he's going nowhere. Then the second method is your weedless method or it's a lot, you get a lot less snags when you're using this method and obviously then you'll use it where there's a little bit of rocks and gullies and um, you're fishing in the gullies in between the rocks and this is going to get a lot more stuck than the setup setup right here so all that i have is a is a bass hook this is a white cap kamagatsu 70 bass hook you can see it's a really nice white cap hook it's got a spring screw um attached already to to the, the um, to the ring of the hook 
you can make your own spring screws if you want to but you can buy the hooks ready with them ready with them fitted fitted with them already so i just buy the ones that are that are fitted with them already and um and you're just good to go then i take like it's only about 25 centimeters of 0.70 or 75 maxima ultra green i put a little number three or number four japan power swivel tie that to that little piece of mono slide a ball sinker or egg sinker onto it you can use the long ones if you want to then a little bead a little bead onto onto the trace that little bead just acts as a stopper against your knot and it's not the, the sinker is not going to damage your knot or get stuck onto your knot um, just a little bit of protection and then the knot that i use is the rapala knot tied onto onto my hook and let me show you guys here quickly you get these mccarthy cob slinkies they are already made for rigging the paddle tail weedless it has a little slit there at the bottom as well as on the top so all that you do is you take your your screw and you screw your paddle tail on like that just make sure it is facing it's facing the right side right side up okay there we go then we measure our hook our hook's gonna come out there and now you just take your paddle tail and you stick it in straight and then just make sure that it comes out in the middle again so what this does is your hook is not proud like in this instance it is hidden underneath underneath the paddle tail so if you're going to pull it through the rocks it's less likely going to get snagged so it still can get snagged and you still will get snagged but it's going to be happen a lot less than with your standard paddle tail it just allows you to put it, pull it through structure without getting snagged up so how it will work is if a cob eats it and you imagine that's his jaw and he pushes down and you set the hook that paddle tail moves that paddle tail moves down and it's got a nice fit it's got a nice tight fit around the jaw and that hook is not going anywhere unless you taking it uh, unless you take it out but you don't always find the slinkies and you don't always have paddle tails available with the slits already but that's no problem you can make your own and that's what i want to show you guys now so you can take your normal paddle tail and rig it the same way but the problem is look at look at the gap of the hook and the paddle tail so if you're going to hook it just through there's no way that the hook is going to set what you need to do is you take a knife and leave enough space for your screw to go in and you just right in the middle start cutting your paddle tail open So once it's open, just make sure it's deep enough. You can see the knife shining through there. It's about two thirds up. That's two, about two thirds in. That's how deep it is. Up to where there, where my thumb is. That's how deep it is. Just deep enough for your hook to go through. And once you're happy with how deep you've cut it open, you just do the exact same thing that you did with the cob slinky. Just just screw it in, couple of turns, measure again, and you go in straight. Okay, so now what you can do, you see the hook is still exposed. What you can do is just go slightly, push your paddle tail slightly forward and just under the paddle tail you can hook it into the paddle tail itself and as the cop eats it it will break th break through expose the hook and the hook can set and this this can push back as well with that cut there the paddle tail is not going to interfere with your hook set exposing the hook allowing for a really good hook set and that's it 
So yeah, that's how to rig your own weedless paddle tail. There's a couple of ways to do it. So yeah guys, that's it for this week's fishing tip and tricks. Um, I hope you guys learned something. Um, I hope I answered some of your questions. And if you, have, if you guys have any suggestions on topics of fishing tips or tricks that you guys need or want to, or you guys require a bit more information, please comment down in the comment section and I'll try my best to make them for you guys or answer them. Guys, I really appreciate all your comments. It, it really means a lot to me. Um, I'm really sorry if I can't reply to all of them um, or I'm really sorry if I don't reply to all of them. I do my best to reply to them. I do try and make time to respond to all these comments but it, it, it really just gets quite a lot and I, and I battle to find the time to respond to all of you guys but I do read them and I do appreciate them and it's really been amazing it's you know, it's overwhelming and um, thanks to you guys um, with all those comments it, it helps me shape this channel and putting it together into something that you guys want to see and something that you guys can watch and can relate to so Please carry on with the comments, I do appreciate them. And like I said, I, I try to make some time and I try to get back to all of you guys, but I do miss some of them and I do miss some of the comments. But don't think I don't want to answer, it's just difficult to find all the time to do it. But yeah, like I said, please, 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 please carry on with the comments and the suggestions and um, feel free to tell me what you like, what you don't like. Um, like I said, I'm still shaping this channel, still building it. and it's not for me it is for you guys so the more you guys provide me with information the more i can build a channel into something that you guys want and what you guys want to see so from my side i just want to say thank you thanks for all the support it has been really amazing guys remember um infinity giveaway coming up big chance of the horizon hxl being given away again so if you don't want to miss out Hit the subscribe button, click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once there's a new video. And don't miss out, Wednesday, new video coming, 6.30pm, don't miss it.